Yama, I'm Jack. Let's take a look at what's in the news. What do all these people have in common? Apart from being incredibly rich and powerful, their Twitter accounts have just been hacked. It's the worst security breach the social media site has ever seen. Here's Leela. Kanye West, Barack Obama, Kim Kardashian, Bill Gates, Elon Musk, US presidential candidate Joe Biden, Apple, Uber. It's probably quicker to list the high profile Twitter users that weren't hacked. Anyways, within minutes, those affected were tweeting things like this. Basically requesting people to send money to the same digital wallet. Yeah, spoiler, nobody doubled their money. Hackers made away with more than $150,000. And Twitter responded by temporarily freezing the ability to tweet or reset passwords for many of its verified users. Everybody with a blue tick. That's huge. Twitter's used by a lot of different people and organisations to share vital information, including emergency services. And the tweet freeze affected their ability to do that. It's the worst hacking attack Twitter has ever faced. And tech experts are worried about how easily and quickly powerful leaders, who often use the platform to make important announcements, lost the ability to control their accounts. Twitter's working on it, but for now, it pays to be a little more careful about believing what we read. More than 2 million people have had to flee their homes because of flooding in northeastern India. The floods were caused by heavy monsoon rains in the state of Assam, and officials say more than 50 people have died. They're also working hard to save hundreds of animals, including the world's largest concentration of one-horned rhinos at Kaziranga National Park. A statue of a protester has popped up in England in support of the Black Lives Matter movement. The statue of Jen Reid is replacing one of Edward Colston, a 17th century English slave trader. The only problem is it was actually put up without permission. So while it'll probably be removed soon, Jen still hopes her message gets out there. It's an amazing feeling. Um, it's really exciting, but obviously we can't forget as to why that statue is there and what it represents. It's been a bumpy few months for the AFL and now some new changes have been announced that will affect where and when the rest of the season will be played. There's even rumours that the grand final could be played in a different state. Hmm. If you like footy, well, you're set to have a pretty great few weeks in the near future. Yes! Wait, why? Well, the AFL's planning a straight-up footy fiesta for rounds 9 to 12 to accelerate and condense the 2020 COVID-ridden season. That means 33 matches will be played across 19 consecutive days from Wednesday, July 29. Whoa, that's like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday... Tuesday, yeah, Wednesday, it's a lot of days Friday, Saturday, and a Monday, lot of footy. You see, exactly 100 matches of the on-again, off-again season are yet to be played. And with yesterday's news that all Victorian clubs will now be based in Queensland for up to 10 weeks, the AFL's kind of keen to get it all over and done with. The evolving situation around different states and communities has meant we've had to make decisions quickly and the relevant adjustments to ensure the season continues. Then there's the whole debacle of the grand final. It's set to be brought forward from the 24th to the 17th of October. And while the MCG's held it for the past 122 years, some other states now have their eye on it. Well, if we are doing the heavy lifting, we would like to be considered for a grand final. Um, I think that's only fair. But of course, it's going to depend on what's happening in the other states. So I guess we'll just have to wait and see and buckle up for some great footy ahead. Let's take a walk on the wild side because it's time for baby animals. Can they walk? Yes, they can. When you're a month old zebra, walking is fraught with peril, especially when someone gives you an enormous ball to play with. But thanks for filming at Denver Zoo. Don't worry, he's fine. Let's head to a zoo in Chile and meet the first white rhino born in South America since the coronavirus pandemic began. This 75 kilogram ball of cuteness is just two weeks old and gets bonus points for not falling over in front of the camera. Finally, the only thing better than watching one baby animal attempting to walk is watching literally dozens of them all at once. More than 100 baby loggerhead turtles at this beach in Colombia successfully scrambled to the surf to begin their turtley lives. Have a turtley radical time over the next 47 to 67 years on average. Well, that's all the news for today, but check back tomorrow because we'll have plenty more.